Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. And today we will talk about the difference between using X and X% percent while we tweening our objects on the page. Okay, this is based on a question from Yaroslav Horak or Yarda Horak in Czech. This is so this is so weird to talk Czech on my screencast. I'm doing it for the first time. So, excuse my Czech. And now let's get back into the question. Why you sometimes use X and sometimes X percent? Let's have a look at this globus example where I have a SVG element which is centered right in the middle of the page. So the white lines is the center of the viewport and it's positioned in the middle using the CSS top left 50% and the transform translate minus 50 minus 50. Okay, so if I turn off the transforms, you'll see that the top left corner of the SVG is centered on the page. If I turn off the left, it's getting to the left side of the browser window and the top would move it to the default top left zero values. Okay, so this is how we centering the object on the page. And now we'll apply green sock. Now we'll tween this element We'll firstly use the X with pixel values, then X with percentage values, and then the X percent. So all about X's today. So let's firstly apply a simple twin and we'll twin it to X of 100 pixels. Okay, so we've got a simple twin max and we're animating the globus to zero in a 0 0.3 seconds to the X value of 100 pixels. And this is where the globus ends up. Okay, now we will apply the 100%. So we're animating to X 100%. As you can see, the globus moved to 116 pixels. Now we reset it back to the style sheet position and we'll apply the third twin, which would be the X% 100. Okay, and now we end up being 58 pixels from the center of the viewport. Okay, so we've got three different twins end up with the three different results. And now let's deconstruct this even closer. We'll just explore all these three variations in more detail. Just a quick recap of the CSS position of our element. And here it is, we've got a globus position, absolute top 50%, left zero, and the transform translate, the left, the X value is set to zero as well. If we change it, to left 50% and translate minus 50 minus 50 will end up being in the middle of the viewport. Here is a proof that the globus really sits in the middle, even though the bottom of the globus doesn't look centered, but that's just the shape of our SVG. So this is the CSS positioning. And now we will set the first twin. Okay, so here we've got a twin to set to X 100 pixels. As you can see, the globus moved to the 100 pixels from the center of the viewport. Okay, what's happening in the style sheet or in the what's happening with the styles of our elements is that the transform, the original transform translate minus 50 minus 50 percent has been overwritten by the Greensock JavaScript library. Okay, so now the transform is set to matrix and values in here. The most important value is the 100, which is the which is taken from the X 100 pixels. Okay, so we overriding the default CSS. So we, we don't have it anymore centered on the page, but we are moving it to 100 pixels from the center of the viewport. So at that moment, the globus is left 50% and on top of that is the 100 pixels applied to it. Okay, so to understand how the X value is calculated, we are overriding the default translate minus 50%. Okay, the, the Y value is recalculated from the percentage to minus 78. That's why it doesn't move from top or bottom. It stays where we had it originally. Okay, so this is the X in 100 pixels. And here we have the second twin when we applying the X of 100% to our globus. As you can see, the 100% now equals to the 116 pixels, which is the width of our element. Okay, so it's taken 
the width of our globus and moved it from the center of the viewport by 116 pixels. Okay, again, this is the default CSS style sheet overwritten by the transforms set by Greensock. Okay, so Greensock is setting the translate value to 100% and the matrix X value is set to zero. Okay, that's why we end up having the element 116 pixels from the center of the viewport. And the last win we applied was the X% percent 100. Okay, this time the 100 percent is still set to the 116 pixels, which is the width of the globus, but this time we're preserving the original transform. Okay, so as you can see, we're still overriding the transform translate, originally set in the style sheet, but it's the minus 50 is recalculated to a pixel value, which is minus 58, and on top of that, Greensock applies the 100 percent translate value. So what this means that we are offsetting the center of our globus by 116 pixels. Okay, so not the left edge like in the previous example, but the center. So we are preserving the default transform translate values, because they are recalculated to the matrix values. And on top of that, we've got the translate 100%. Okay, so let's have a look at it again in the browser. The first twin we're applying is the X 100 pixels and we can explore it in the developer tools. You can see that the transform is calculated to pixels, which is 100 and we're overriding the default CSS value. Then if we apply the second twin, which is X percent, X 100 percent, you'll see that the value of the matrix is set to zero but we are translating it by 100% of the width of the element, which is 116. And then we have the third one, or oh, now we actually reset it. So now we reset back to the style sheet positions, means that the translate will disappear. So we end up back into the middle, otherwise it wouldn't be accurate, okay? So I had to do this extra tween on my timeline just to show you how it goes from the default CSS position to the X% percent 100. Okay, so this is the X% percent 100. As you can see again, we're overriding transform translate, which is set in the matrix in the pixel values. And on top of that, we are applying the translate 100%. Okay, so hopefully it all makes sense now. You can read more about the percentage based transforms of the X and Y percent options on the Greensock release page. There's also a couple useful code pen demos. So feel free to explore them. But in a quick summary, the X person and Y person are very useful when you're dealing with responsive and full screen slideshows. Okay, so you don't have to recalculate anything. It just works. Greensock does all the hard work for you in the background. And this is exactly why I've used the X person on one of the projects from the Greensock workshop. Okay, later on in the last SVG animation of the Greensock workshop, I've also used the attribute X, which is another X to the team, <laughs> another X to the collection, and I'll be using it as the attribute. So we'll be animating the attribute X. Okay, it's, it's very useful when you're dealing with masks, and this makes sure that it works in every browser. Okay, so you'll see later on, in the Greensock workshop that even the attribute X can be animated and it's actually necessary if you're using the clip path for masking. So hopefully it all makes sense now, Yardo. And if you have any other questions or anyone else going through the Greensock workshop, just use the form on the first landing page of the workshop and I'll try to answer it as best as I can. And that's it all for today. Hopefully, Yardo, it makes more sense now when to use the X, X person and attribute X. And for everyone else, don't forget to check out the Greensock workshop page and find out more what you can learn inside of the workshop. And if you've got another Greensock questions, leave them under the video. I'll happily answer it as well in my next screencast. Okay. 
Until next time, happy tweening and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.